If race is the most contentious issue in American life, then surely education comes a close second. And often they're really inseparable. Minorities demand not just equal opportunity to go to college, but special opportunity. And to varying degrees, the government has supported that demand. It's an old story, but what happens when the majority is the minority and vice versa? We explain with a visit to Alabama State University in Montgomery. A hundred years ago, it was called the State Normal School for Colored Students. In the days of segregation, it kept black students in their place by providing only a limited education. Graduation Day, 1999. Today's graduates receive diplomas in wide-ranging fields of study. Tarakisha DuBose. But this look of Alabama State had to change. Andre McMillan. ASU was ordered by law to recruit minorities. Rosemary. These are the minorities. Douglas Kirk. In 1995, a federal judge ordered the state of Alabama to pay a million dollars a year for 10 years to fund scholarships just for white students. Most are getting an absolutely free education. Although there are black scholarships as well, some students, like Rhonda Turner, Mark Harris, and Corey Muhammad, find the subsidizing of whites offensive. Uh, white universities, their reasons for providing minority scholarships are because of the past injustices and because of the racial environment at that university. Um, ASU has never discriminated against whites. We, it was never a situation to where um, blacks didn't want whites to go to school with them. Whites didn't want to come to school with blacks. We will accept whoever wants to come here. They want to stay out there, then they're going to stay out there. Come in if you want. The door is open. But it took more than a push to get whites to walk in. It took cash. The judge appointed attorney Carlos Gonzalez to see to it that his order was carried out. Do you think the existing system is fair? Fair to black uh, students, to African American students? Uh, I think it is fair when put into the larger context of what the court is trying to achieve, yes sir. What the court was trying to achieve was the dismantling of Alabama's separate but unequal educational system. The chapter starts on page 431. Ready? To make ASU okay, academically competitive and attract races. That's what makes it so difficult. The judge ordered the state to provide more than $100 million for advanced courses, new classrooms, increased faculty. He added an extra $10 million to help ASU recruit more whites. Now, more than 500 whites are enrolled, about 10% of the student population, and about 80% of them are on scholarships. Uh, it was critical uh, that the desegregation effort begin in earnest rapidly. That's what these scholarships are for. The overall objective here is to increase the opportunity for all students. Uh, it is difficult, I admit it, for some students to, uh, to accept it. It was more than just the white-only scholarships that upset black students. What truly galled them was one of the judge's key rationales for ordering them. He said that increasing the number of whites would eliminate the perception among whites that ASU provides an inferior education. We don't need white students to come, and that's the stamp of approval of, of a valid school. He was quick to say that that wasn't his view, but he was trying to counteract the general view. That, oh, right. What do you think of that? I think that's awful. So saying that we need white students here in order to eliminate perceptions of inferiority as if they're going to go back home and tell their parents and other, um, other members of their community that, hey, this is a good school. We don't need that. We don't need white students. We are a qualified school. But the law says you do need them. According to Jim Smithson, ASU's minority recruiter. You at our university would be a minority. You're aware of that. The realities of race in Alabama present real barriers to getting whites to come to the school. The traditional population is African American. You and I are the minorities, OK? He pitches ASU to high school students across Alabama. We received uh, an invitation to go to a school in North Alabama. This was a all-white school. The first young lady I was speaking with, uh, she was informed that we were a traditional black university. Uh, she asked positive questions, and then mom came out of nowhere screaming, 
Jane Doe, get away from that table. That's an in school. That's a black school. That's she used the, 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 oh, the N-word, and she said it as loud as she could so that anybody could hear her. And that really made me feel about that small. And however, I mean, I just said, here is our brochures. Thank you for stopping by. And this is your scholarship form, OK? But even the offer of scholarships worth anywhere from ten to $30,000 over four years wasn't enough. Here's your scholarship form. Recruiting whites was so difficult, ASU made them an even better offer. While a black student needed a 3.0 grade point average, a B to get a full tuition, a white needed only a C, a 2.0. That's nothing. You could have slept through high school and got a 2.0. But even good grades didn't guarantee a black student a scholarship. I came here with a 3.5 grade point average, but I didn't get a scholarship, and I was upset. I found out the qualifications for white students to get a scholarship, 2.0, and things of that nature. It just didn't look right to me. For the past four years, the state of Alabama has paid every penny of Richard Livingston's tuition. What were your grades like? What were your grades like when you here? Uh, you I transferred from Indiana State with a 2.58 GPA. Is that a C? Mid-C range. From what you know, are they, uh, are they pretty smart? They do the work? Capable of doing the work? Those that I know, yeah. But okay. there has been those that weren't capable of doing the work. A couple that I've seen that were real lazy and shiftless. So you're okay. going to have all kinds, it's especially with those low standards. Even whites who came in with top grades, like Karen Heiss, Chris Robinson, and Rosie Heiss, all of whom got free tuition, room, board, and books, learned what it was like to be stereotyped because of skin color. Someone was quoted in the newspaper as saying, all of the, people, all of the white people here are really When I read it, it really made me angry. People may from afar look at the white students and say, oh, well, they, don't, they didn't have the grades to get in, or, or they're just here because they're on a white scholarship. But once you're actually in class with people and measure up, they realize that you're not the idiot from off the street that decided to come to ASU. When they all started at ASU in 1995, the school was still almost 95% black. I was about to say, university. Being the minority took a little getting used to. Being the minority, it is like, wow, everybody's, I stand out everywhere I go. There's nothing that I can do to blend in. When I first got here, you know, I'm looking around thinking, wow, I'm the only white person in a lot of situations. And then you know what it feels like for people not to talk to you because you're a certain color or people to look at you and think a certain thing immediately. Why did you want to come here? because it was paid for. Do you think, any of you think it's unfair? I do. Very. I think that it's definitely unfair that we're here based on the fact that we're white um, and we're given money to be here because we're white. However, I wasn't going to pass up the chance to have a free education. I'm, I'm not stupid. I'm just, I just don't think it's fair. The university did eliminate some when it announced that starting with 1999 freshmen, the scholarship requirements are the same for everyone. But that's not good enough for Jesse Tompkins, a graduate student who says that any scholarship program that excludes blacks is still flat out wrong. Here in Alabama, we have a program that is designed to discriminate and is state supported. And that, says Tompkins, is a violation of his constitutional rights and he's brought in a white conservative lawyer to sue the university. Jesse had a right to compete for that scholarship on the same terms as any other student without taking the color of his skin into consideration. The lawyer, Terry Pell, a former official of the Reagan administration, is senior counsel for the Center for Individual Rights, the CIR, a conservative foundation. The only way to put race behind us is, in fact, to put race behind us. If you think the president of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Elaine Jones, would agree with that statement, you'd be wrong. I believe that the Center for Individual Rights has an agenda that is going to move us back toward 
uh, separate and unequal. All of the center's previous challenges of racial preferences at colleges have been on behalf of white students who say minorities special treatment. Are you uh, surprised that the CIR took the case? Oh no, Marlon. I'm not surprised. I mean, the CIR has been on a tear to undercut all of the progress that we as a nation have made on the issues of race. Do you suggest that Jesse has a, a, a hidden agenda in all this? Oh no, all I, on this one I'm saying that Jesse is being used. There are some who are saying you're simply being used by a conservative legal foundation that wants to get rid of affirmative action and that they're trying to put a black face on this no, no, I, it, action. That's outrageous. I am the one that went to CR in order to get help because no other group would help me. The NAACP said, no, we can't help. And wouldn't help. If the center is successful in eliminating this scholarship program, what it means is that scholarship programs across the country and other initiatives that encourage African-American and brown students to go to school will be eliminated. It'll go beyond scholarships. It'll be, it'll be admissions in a race-conscious effort. I think it's the height of hypocrisy to start questioning our motives when these traditional civil rights organizations were unwilling to represent Jesse in a case challenging a racial preference which clearly harms blacks. In the eyes of many whites who would come to Alabama State University, they will not come because they perceive it as being uh, of an perception and the court is trying to overcome that perception by saying let's make the scholarships limited amount of scholarships available so that they can come get the education and see for themselves let's move toward in Alabama an integrated high education setting but what happens in five years when the whites only scholarship program ends after these scholarships run out I don't believe that it's going to be any more diversified than it was before it started. Because the major incentive to come is still the money. Of course. You think that whites will continue to go, pay tuition, do all the things ordinary students do, uh, or once the money disappears, the whites will disappear? Well, by that time, Alabama State University will have white alumni who will be inclined to encourage their associates, friends, children, and others in the future to attend Alabama State University. When I came in, I felt like, well, this is their school, and, and, and I don't want it to be an us and them thing because I don't feel that way at all. But that's kind of, I was like, well, I'm the oddball here. But now I feel like, well, this is my school, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been my school for four years. And this is going to be my alma mater, and I'm going to be an alumni, uh, and I'm going to love it, you know, and that's just how it is.